Yeah, it gotta be crisp. And I keep my apples in the fridge because then they're even more crisp. And everyone's like, what the fuck are you doing? People will literally be in the same sentence, be like, I like it when apples are crisp. Why do you keep apples in the fridge? And I'm like, so they're crisp. <laughs> <laughs> Homestuck, the internet's Ulysses. Or Hachu for short. This is the podcast where we compare Homestuck and Ulysses bit by manageable bit. I'm your co-host, Jamie. I think I've run out of majors. <laughs> That's I've run out, my major is I've run out of majors. Well, I'm your co-host, Kira, resident salamander boy, because I just found a big old salamander in my driveway right before recording this. Which is weird, because I don't live in a place where there's a lot of salamanders. And obviously, this is a homestuck portent. You can find me at K-I-Y-Y-E on Tumblr and at K-I-Y-Y-E-S on Instagram and Patreon. You can find me at J-A-I-M-E-T-A-M-A-R on Instagram and as the same thing, .wordpress.com. Sexy. So, let's get into reading questions. Oh boy, I tried to make mine not like obscure names of things this time. Oh no, I took notes on all the obscure names of things. (laughs) Well, there's one, debatably two obscure names of things. I have, yeah, I have five questions. One of them is like a four part answer and you'll get two points if you get any, you'll get one point for any combination of two answers. I can't do math, but that sounds bold and exhilarating. Well, we can re-explain it. Do you want to do your first question? Do you want me to? I would love to do my first question. Perfect. In Jade's introduction, what is the name of her cool dolls? Squirtle? Squiddle. Not, oh, I should have specified. Not Squiddles. Maybe you get like a half point for that. No, not the squiddles, the dolls. The squid I, I would call squiddles like stuffed animals or toys. I'm talking about the little plush doll guys. Uh, is it like a real thing? It's super not a real thing. Oh, I hope it's not a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like the, wait, are they like the furry? Yes. I don't remember. Wait, well, the they're... anthro. Oh? An- I. That's all I got. You're really close. I, yeah. I feel like. You get, like, a half point for that, maybe? Sure. They're called Manthro Chaps. <laughs> no, never would have got that. <laughs> Manthro Chaps! Wonderful. Okay, hit me with the Ulysses question. What does Leopold Bloom check to make sure he has safe inside his hat? Is it his potato friend? No, but he also checks to make sure he has that. <laughs> that wasn't in his hat, though. Oh, damn. Isn't it, like, a piece of paper? Yeah, it's a white slip of paper, which according to the Ulysses Guide is because he has like a secret post box under another name and that's like the paper for it. I have no idea how you're supposed to know that. Wow. Is is mail a theme in both Homestuck and Ulysses? <laughs> motif. Motif. Mail's a motif. Mail's my motif. That's how I'm going to introduce my gender to people. I'll be like, hi, my name's Kira. Mail's my motif. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's a question for you about Homestuck. What is the interesting mutation that the small and cute cat that Rose finds has? Like four eyes? Yes, there you go. That was a good, easy one. I like that cat a lot. Okay, ready for the next one? So ready. With whom is Molly cheating on Leopold? Oh shit, his name is like Blazer Boy. (laughs) Yeah, that's really close. I'll give you that. Do you know what his like job is? Uh, uh, musician? Yeah, kind of. She's a musician. Yeah, she sings. He does something relating to that. I don't know, like a manager? Yeah. His name is Blazes Boylan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I knew it. I was. <laughs> Wait, that's six and six. Could that be a troll name? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> this is my troll sona, Blazin Boylan. <laughs> Blazes. Multiple blazes. Blazes. Okay, got it. Minecraft. Yeah, he's the manager of Molly's upcoming concert tour. I can't believe Blazes Boy was actually right. (laughs) Like, I knew it was, like, something Blaze-related, because I thought about Minecraft. (laughs) Yeah, he's actually just, like, a Minecraft character. Oh, and Steve! What? What? Steve? Like, Steve? Oh! 
character in Stephen oh. Dedalus. Oh my god, Steve from Minecraft is Stephen Dedalus. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if anyone's made like a Ulysses Minecraft map. According to James Joyce, you could like represent, like you could recreate Dublin on this day from this book. Well, I guess someone's probably made a Minecraft map of it. And if they haven't, we have to do this immediately. Okay, next question. Uh, this is more of a like conceptual one. What is the source of Jade's future telling abilities? Oh no. Um. <laughs> uh, I remember like being like, oh, because that's like always something that I like would forget. She's like, I don't know. Seriously? Is it like a thing, like an event that happened? Yes, it, it is. Well, it's not a single event. Oh wait. Well, wait. No, it's. Does it have to do with her dream self? Yes. She just, like, see things that... Oh, oh, wait. Is it... is it she talks to the trolls and they, like, tell her? No, that is not... You were closer before. Okay, yeah, there's, like, the dream self that, like, does things. Yes. Like, does it have access to, like... This Was was this in a flash? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was in, like, one of the big important flashes. Yeah, no, I remember it. I just don't remember... Because there's the bit earlier where she says to John, like, you're not awake yet. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm literally awake right now. But she means his dream self. And I remember the bit where you first see Jade's dream self. And she, like, goes to John and you see him asleep. But I don't remember how her dream self existing lets her actually, like, know the future. Well, all of those things you said were true, but I'm not going to give you the question because you didn't say the answer to the question, which is the clouds. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. She yeah, can that's see... too abstract for me. She... <laughs> it's not abstract at all. It's a physical thing. The literal clouds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, you came close. Um, okay. This is the like weird four, two point ish one. What are the names of Leopold's children and why are they not around? So if you give me like both of their names, that's one point. If you give me like one of their names and the reason they're not around, that would also be one point. If you can give me both of their names and both of the reasons they're not around, that's two points. But if you give me like both of their names and then one of the reasons they're not around, that's still only one point. Mm Okay, fuck. Okay, one of them is named Millie. Yes. She is at school? Uh, not really. She's no. off somewhere. She's being an adult. She's almost yes. an adult. She's 15. Okay, yes. fuck, she's not an adult. She No, she is off, like, being an adult, but she's also 15. Okay, well, she's 15 and she's off being an adult. Um, the other one is, fuck, the other one, the other one is dead. Yes, that's one point. And it's a boy. Yep. His name is, like, Rugby. <laughs> Just take out one letter. Rubby? Well, Rudy! Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's you got one point. Can you tell me where where Millie is or what she's doing? Is she, like, acting? No. She's off gallivanting around with her boyfriend. She's in, she in like, France or some shit? No, she's just in a different place in Ireland. Oh. The name of which sounds like the name of a different character. Uh, 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 bla- Blaze Boyland? <laughs> no, do you want me to tell you? Yes, tell me. She's in Mullingar. Oh, Buckwild Mulligan. Buckwild Mullingar, working at a photography studio. And then Rudy, which you got, died 11 days after he was born. How many points do I get? One. Well, do you want me to give you 0.5 since you gave me half points out of the question? Sure. Sounds sexy. Okay. Next question for you from, yes. from you. Yes. What is John's chum handle, his old chum handle that we learned before he changed it in response to some trolling? Ghosty trickster. Yes. <laughs> Did you take notes? No, I think I remember that from the first time. Nice, Cause, nice. Because it was one of those things where like it was his first one was like ectobiologist, right? And then I remember like, oh, I have such a clear memory of this. We were on the ski lift. When I was in, like, ninth grade, and you were like, yeah, they're all, like, the DNA letters. And I was like, what the fuck? And I was <laughs> like, 
but John isn't. It's E.B. And you were like, oh, yeah, wink, wink. You haven't gotten to that bit yet. And then I remember, like, reading this bit and being like, oh, it used to be G.T. And then he changed it. And I was like, "Uh uh-huh, I understand things now. (laughs) Revelations on the ski lift. (laughs) What is the meaning of the word Molly asks Leopold to define for her? And bonus J points, not actual points, but bonus J points if you can remember what the word is. It means reincarnation. Yep. Ish. And the word is like metamivisis, meta metapsychosis. Metam Yeah. <laughs> I don't have it written. Met- metam yeah, metampsychosis, which I've never heard before. The answer I have is basically reincarnation. Quote, supposed transmigration at death of the soul of a human being or animal into the into a new body of the same or a different species. So, yeah, it's just reincarnation. And that quote is from Google definitions, not from Ulysses. Sweet. Last question. What is Rose's entry item? Is it, oh boy, violin? Is it a food? Um, I'm gonna say no. Oh, God, I should super remember this. She's your favorite. How do you not know know this? I know. I'll probably say it and you'll be like, oh, fuck. And I have such a specific memory of, like, it. (laughs) It's not quite a food. It's not a food. I know you're right because I remember it and being like, is she going to eat it? But I don't. (laughs) Is it like a wine glass? Um, uh, yeah, I'll give you Is it a wine bottle? Yes, it's a wine bottle. Okay, yeah. You get the point for that. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I remember that now. Being like, is she going to drink from it or is she going to, like, break it? I don't actually remember which one she does. I think she breaks it. Yeah, she breaks it. Right. Yes. Um, How many points is that? That was just one. One? No, how many? What are our final? Oh, wait, do you have to ask me a final? Yeah, I have one more one. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, why is Leopold dressed the way he is? A funeral. Yeah. Okay. You have You get five and a half points for that. Sick. I think you get... Three and a half, if I can count. Wait, no, four and a half. Yes, four and a half. Perfect. Wonderful. Do you want to do those one minute summaries? Yeah. Okay, I am 100% sure I'm going to be missing some details, but actually I'm 100% sure I'm missing like all the details. (laughs) Maybe as I talk about it, some of them will come back to me. Got it. Okay, do you want to go first? You want me to go first? Um, whatever you want. I want to go first. I want to get it out of the way. Okay, go first. Um, so this is, I'm pretty sure it starts and you meet Jade. And she's like the fourth kid that you don't know yet. And you kind of like follow her around. You see her fun, um, board game Silidex options. Um, and she is like walking around her house. Like you see a bunch of like conversations that have already happened. And so she's walking around her house, like, trying to, like, feed her dog, but trying to avoid her grandfather, just like all the other kids have been trying to, like, avoid their guardians. Eventually you find out that her grandfather is, in fact, dead and just, like, a taxidermied version of himself, which is iffy. Um, she goes to feed her do- her dog, Becquerel, and he's, like, a scary dog that eats, like, radiated steaks. Rose enters. I think that was in a flash, and we know that I don't remember anything that happens in flashes ever, even though I'm pretty sure I watched this one twice. Um, you meet Di- the is it the felt? Those are the midnight crew. Yeah, you meet the midnight crew. I'm so excited for that song. <laughs> <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> Out of time, it. Yeah, you meet them, and yeah, Jade. Like you see Jade's, you kind of see dream selves for like the first time, right? Um, yeah, essentially, yeah. And Jade has like this robot that like goes around and like does the things that her dream self is doing. You see John's sleeping dream self. And also, like, there's, you you meet, like, the trolls, but you don't know they're the trolls yet, and you see a bunch of, like, John has a bunch of, like, weird doodles all of his posters that he's never been able to see before, but apparently everyone else has, and he's really freaked out by it. Nice. What important details am I missing? Um, the only thing you missed was Dave getting beat up and then retrieving the betas. Yes, I remember Dave getting, like, by bro. Yes. Yeah, I don't know how the fuck anyone ever thought he was, like, a good guardian. I know, right? Um, I was reading the Andrew Hussey commentary for the, like, flashes where Dave gets totally wrecked by bro, and Hussey was throwing so much shade. Like, he was like, wow, 
This is a totally normal guardian uh, adopted child interaction. Totally, completely normal. Not like super fucked up or anything at all, right guys? Homestuck is a silly narrative that doesn't ever deal with dark themes. <laughs> oh my god, a huge mood. <laughs> and I was like, hussy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, summarize Ulysses for me. Fuck. <laughs> oh, God, I was putting it off. Okay. So, we meet Leopold Bloom, who is the main character of Ulysses, and he's supposed to be Odysseus slash Ulysses in the big analogy. Um, He really likes meat? He's really into meat? <laughs> what um, kind of meat? Oh, uh, well, like, shitty meat, weird meat, like, kidneys. Yeah, liver, kidneys, I don't know. Um, And so he's, like, hanging out with his cat and stuff, and he's like, hi, cat. And he gives his cat milk, and then he goes to, like, buy a kidney, and then he's, like, staring at some girl's hips, and it's kind of weird. Um, he has a wife. Her name is Molly. She is a singer. She's, like, a concert soprano, I think. And uh, he's, like, making her breakfast and shit and reading letters from his daughter and uh, reminiscing about his dead son at some point. And his wife is maybe having an affair with this dude named Blazy Boys. <laughs> <laughs> and... Minutes up. Fuck. Well. What does I he probably... do at the very end of the episode? At the very end of the episode, he uh, has a black suit on and he's walking about. No, before that. Uh... Or maybe after that, depending on which time you're talking about him walking about. Uh, he the goes magazine. To, oh, he yeah. goes to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. He goes to the bathroom, and it's like a very detailed description of him going to the bathroom, yeah. Yep. Okay, to start off with, the huge revelation that I had that I didn't want to tell you when we were talking earlier this week. Um, the difference between Stephen and Leopold. Yeah. This is a bigger discussion. The actual revelation I had was that Stephen is an N-type and Leopold is an S-type, but I oh. want to try to figure out their whole Myers-Briggs. <laughs> <laughs> um, I diagnose Stephen as an INTJ because that's Dirk. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. You think he's J, even though he does nothing ever? Actually, no, you're super right. He's definitely J. My, for context, listeners, in my Irish Lit class, we just read the last two chapters of Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, which means I'm now going to go back and read the first three and literally have read the book backwards, but it's fine. And the fourth chapter of Portrait is literally just all about Stephen, basically using Catholicism to self-harm, and it's, like, super fucked up. But yeah, a P-type would never be that fastidious about any routine. <laughs> okay, First of all, yes, agreed. Second of all, that was so threatening when you were like, for context, <laughs> listeners. Yeah, I was like, well, I was like, because like Kira already knows this, so I want to make it clear that I'm not like, I don't know. <laughs> and then I said it, and I was like, that was a little weird, but it's fine. <laughs> for context, listeners. Um, yeah, I agree with that diagnosis of Steven. I said Leopold was... We don't. I feel like we don't know him well enough to really know, but I said ISF or ISTP. Yeah, I think I don't know. I'd probably. I don't. I feel like we don't know him well enough, but I would maybe guess T. I feel like toxic masculinity, and he's Odysseus, but also like yeah. okay, what's Odysseus <laughs> type? <laughs> oh shit! He's E. He's definitely E. Yeah. E Odysseus is like an E. ESTJ. Uh, I feel like Odysseus is, like, really a clever boy, though. Like, maybe he's uh, N. Yeah. TJ? <laughs> as I am trying to learn, being S doesn't mean you're stupid. It means, it just means you don't think in metaphors. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is true. Um, does Odysseus think in metaphors? Um, no, not really. But he is kind of a clever, he's a very resourceful boy. Maybe that's, like... Maybe that's J. E, or maybe that's P, though. Oh, yeah. I feel like he's e maybe, like, an ESTP. ESTP? Let's look up what that means. Isn't that, like, the virtuoso or something on 16 Personalities? I'm looking it up. People really, really hate 16 Personalities. Really? Yeah, I don't care. I just like the little people. I think they're cute. Wait, did we say ESTP? Yeah. That's entrepreneur. Uh, well? <laughs> okay, but here's the desc description. Smart, energetic, and very perceptive people who truly enjoy living on the edge. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that sounds like, I mean. I'm looking up Odysseus Myers-Briggs. <laughs> I'm going to look up Ulysses Myers-Briggs. <laughs> 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 the whole episode now. <laughs> 
<laughs> the whole episode is diagnosing Myers Briggs. Here are my type. This is from personalitycafe.com. Um, oh, there's a. Oh, this person says that um, Odysseus is ENTP. Yep, I'm seeing a lot of ENTP for Odysseus. Okay, okay this is saying that Leopold is EN, ENFP. Stephen is INFJ. Fair. N, and then Molly is ESFP. Blazes Boylan is ESTP. Buff <laughs> Mulligan is ENTP. Haynes is ISTJ. And then two other characters we haven't met yet. I highly agree with Buck Mulligan ENTP. I think I agree with Odysseus ENTP also. I can see, what was it, INFJ for Steven? Yeah, I can definitely see him as being F. Yeah. Because he's, I mean, Dirk is T, but, like, he's also, like, I mean, not Dirk specifically, like, Steven is just so, like, uh-huh, that's how yeah. I feel about life. Oh my god, my Irish lit class, the, but actually both of our last, both of our classes this week, we literally spent the entire class, one, people were shitting on Steven, like, they hate him so much, and we were just <laughs> comparing him to Holden Caulfield the whole time. <laughs> Didn't you, like, do that in the last episode? Probably. No, someone, literally someone who was not me was like, so I hate Steven, he's a fucking prick, like, she said those exact words in class, and then... Like, someone else was like, he kind of reminded me of Holden Caulfield. And I was like, I think I said that. Like, I think I, yeah, I think I said that he's the kind of person Holden Caulfield would hate. I think you did say that. Yeah, which I still think is true. And we, people had some, like, really, because, like, almost all of us had read it. So, like, it was a really good discussion. It was a lot of fun. Sounds sexy. I'm so glad I stayed in this class. (laughs) (laughs) I also am, so that you can actually know shit for our podcast. Yeah, that too. Okay, so some of the really good things, I like comparisons I had, these were like kind of from Ulysses' Guide. This is a really valid comparison, I think, between Homestuck and Ulysses. Is like, in Ulysses, there's a lot of, there are a lot more subtle, but there are parallels between the way Stephen is introduced and the way Leopold is introduced. Um, like, they're both preparing breakfast. There's the tower. Something about green stones, though I don't remember that from the first time. Apparently there's a panther the first time, which is like, which I yeah, didn't in his, remember. in his dream. Right, right, right. And then there's, like, Leopold's cat, and then there's the milk, where it's, like, where, like, Leopold's just, like, pouring the milk for the cat, and then the other one, like, Haynes is trying to speak Irish, and the lady's like, no, I, sorry, are you speaking French? Um, Oh, yeah. And then, like, in Homestuck, obviously, like, every time a character is introduced, it's, like, a young boy stands in his bedroom. Yes, that's super valid. I was, yeah, no, I, so, like, I was thinking the whole time about the different the ways that they're introduced because a big thing with Jade's introduction is that she breaks all the previous rules. Mm. And yeah, because like she has basically like two introduction pages because she doesn't start out in her room. Um, And then like grandpa also breaks a bunch of rules because he has like so many interests that it's like, what the fuck are you doing, old man Jake? Um, so it's interesting how similar, a similar ways into the story, considering we've been reading both of them, like, at the same time, so it, we're a similar, like, you know, word count. Yeah, in. yeah, Um. Well, it, no, not at all, but Well, yeah. not at all. <laughs> I guess, like, in the grand scheme of the story, we're a similar ways in. Um, it's interesting how, like, Jade is introduced and Leopold is also introduced. Can we argue that Jade is now the main character of Homestuck? <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> like, if Leopold is the main character of, of U- Ulysses, maybe Jade is the main character of Homestuck, guys. I don't know. Yeah, there's just, because they obviously, there are some things, though, in Homestuck where I'm like, or where, even when I'm reading Ulysses, where I'm like, Andrew Hussey read this. <laughs> like, he knows he something. Knows. He knows something's up. I'm so excited to meet the denizens so we can talk about mythology because I feel like that's just like such a good comparison. But I'm saving it for when we actually get to like the real mythology stuff in Homestuck. Yes, so sexy. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, here's a good question. What would Leopold prototype his sprite with? <laughs> oh, fuck. His potato, obviously. Oh, right. Yeah, I <laughs> his cat and his potato. Yeah. I love it. The potato is so weird. Like, in the Ulysses Guide, it's like, obviously, this is his shrunken potato talisman. And the only line is like, potato I have. I know, I read that, and I was like, he's just got a potato? And then I read it, like, four more times, and I was like, I guess he's got a potato. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of adorable. Okay, um, there's a line that I don't have the page number for, 
in Ulysses where it says night sky moon violet and it's like when he's walking I think describing it or something like that mm-hmm. so I can't believe Joyce is a dirt streamer oh my god I can't believe Joyce is a dirt streamer <laughs> well I feel like actually though I feel like Steven would be a dirt streamer and like Leopold would maybe be a prospect dreamer that's exactly what I said I have in parentheses Steven Depps is but I think Leopold might be prospect question mark yeah, and I feel like if we're drawing Leopold Jade parallels here, like, definitely. I mean, just based on the beta kids, the Prospect Dreamers are just, like, Prospect Dreamers are the ones that are, like, happy and fun, and then Durst Dreamers take themselves too seriously. Yes, completely correct. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, list of Jade Leopold parallels. One, they have a pet and talk about it a lot. Two, a weird relationship with meat. Um, That's all I got. <laughs> Um, does that mean, are you implying that Leopold is a furry? Yes, absolutely I am. <laughs> <laughs> Leopold's into cat girls, guys. Oh, okay. The magazine he picks up to go to the bathroom is called Titbits, and I did some research because I was like, there's no way that's not a porn magazine, and apparently it's not, but like... Wait, it's called Titbits? Yeah. I thought it was Tidbits. Apparently that's just a British spelling of Tidbits, but <laughs> in my translation it definitely was Tit, like boob <laughs> oh my god that's so funny titbits mm-hmm. <laughs> sounds like a lesbian magazine um well they're both lesbians there's another parallel <laughs> who leopold and jade <laughs> oh no <laughs> <laughs> i wish molly bloom was a lesbian yeah the story well, would be so is. much more interesting if she kept cheating on leopold with women uh, maybe she will you don't know yet valid i feel like okay Leopold is, like, making breakfast for his wife. Jade spends half of her introduction making breakfast for Beck. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I had a quote about that. Let me find it. You dial up a thick T-bone steak, which you are sure Becquerel is in the mood for, because he is in the mood for steak every day and is never in the mood for anything else. But he does like his steak well-cooked. And I wrote, I can't believe Kira is Becquerel. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I like to my, my steak lightly irradiated. No, it was, like, super irradiated. It was, like, yeah, nuked. <laughs> it was, like, super nuked. Beck is a very good dog, but also a wild boy. Oh, I had such a good note. This is, like, not related to what we were talking about. Where was it? Did I put it? Oh. Okay, so this is about Jade. When we meet, like, she was walking past... When you first find out that her grandfather is actually just a taxidermied version of a human. Um, yes. And I don't remember, actually, exactly when this is, but the line is... He spends most of his time in the grand foyer, stewing in his own intensity and charisma. And I wrote that down, and then my note on it was, sounds like Stephen Dedalus with (laughs) (laughs) self-esteem. I think I also wrote that down somewhere, and I was like, sounds like a fake joke. Jake doesn't have any intensity or charisma. (laughs) (laughs) He does when he's dead. Yeah, he does when he's dead, or when he's super old. I think he has charisma. He's like, he's he's like... Yeah, he has some charisma. He's cute. He's, He's... I feel like Jake is on the path that he's a, he's attempting to cultivate a sense of charisma and intensity, but Alpha Jake, it just kind of dies because he realized, whoops, I don't want to be like a fake person. Uh, and also he gets the self-esteem shit on, but then in the beta timeline where he's free to just like be a like hunter dude whenever he wants and like go fuck a bunch of blue ladies, he just like goes buck wild with it. Yeah, valid, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Let me think... I had something else to say about Jade. I don't remember what. Oh, at one point, Jade p- is picking up the fruits, right? Yeah. And I totally forgot that the little fruits had names, and she called one a crab apple, and I wrote down, Dave Cat foreshadowing? Oh my god, Kira. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Jade Cat foreshadowing. Crab, crab apple. is not a real fruit. <laughs> yeah, it's super not. Well, also, real fruits don't have faces or jump around, though, so... That's fair. I mean, unless they do, and I just... Yeah, you just haven't noticed. I just... (laughs) I eat so much dairy and starch that I never notice that fruits actually have faces and they jump around. And talk to you. You've never had a conversation with an apple? I've never had a conversation with an apple. Well, you're missing out. (laughs) (laughs) I'll have to get on that. That's what the real reason why everyone hates Red Delicious is because they're just really bad conversationalists. <laughs> <laughs> and what about Granny Smith? Are they like gra- are they like grannies? Yeah, they're called that. They're just like all have the personality of like eighty year old women. 
My favorite apple is Fiji apple. I feel like Fiji apple. My favorite apple, apple is also a Fiji apple. Fiji I apple had it can... at your house once and it was very good. I know, right? Fiji apple can fuck. <laughs> I was talking to, I think, like, I can't remember which one of my friends, some friends, and they were like, can we start a nationwide campaign to just, like, get people to stop growing red delicious apples? And I was like, let's start with campus just to get them to stop purchasing them. <laughs> I would love that. I don't know if I've ever eaten a Red Delicious. What's the issue with Red Delicious? Um, You know how an apple, if it's like old and or like too warm, it's like grainy? Yes. All Red Delicious are like that. All the time. Always? Yep. Terrible. Yep, it's the worst. It's disgusting. Like they don't taste bad. It's just that, or at least I don't think they taste bad. They taste just kind of like a regular apple, but they're just like not, like not crisp at all. But you gotta be crisp. Yeah, it gotta be crisp, and I keep my apples in the fridge, because then they're even more crisp, and everyone's like, what the fuck are you doing? People will literally be in the same sentence, be like, I like it when apples are crisp. Why do you keep apples in the fridge? And I'm like, so they're crisp. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best thing you've ever said to me. Um. Okay, what's the next note that was actually important? Mm-mm-mm. My notes are just more of a mess every single reading. Um, okay, this is a quote from, I read the, like, the, the spark notes for this. I did actually read it, I promise, but then I read the spark notes for this episode of Ulysses. And the quote is from spark notes. As Odysseus was helplessly enthralled to Calypso in the Odyssey, so is Bloom presented in Calypso as paralyzed and enamored by Molly. Thus we see Joyce using the Homeric parallels to produce irony. And my note is, did someone say irony? (laughs) (laughs) This just in, every work that has irony in it is now just the same as Homestuck. And written by Dave. Yep, definitely. Dave is James Joyce. Yep, of course. Yes, of course. Um, yeah, that's sexy. I was thinking about the Calypso thing. Yeah. Is there anyone in Homestuck who's like, there's a lot of people in Homestuck who are enthralled by things and people, but not yet. Yes, there are a lot of people in Homestuck. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you're not wrong about that. So, do you want to just wrap up? Yeah. Thank you for listening to this episode of Homestuck, the Internet's Ulysses. You can find us at htiu.tumblr.com and on Spotify, iTunes, and Google Play. Thank you for listening. See you next time on Hachoo. Bye.